This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we're dealing with a Frigidaire washer that won't spin. It could be the brushes on the motor, or it could be the motor control unit shown here, or it could be the door switch. All of them are possible culprits. Uh, right here we're showing a real quick outline of how to do the replacement of the door switch, which run about 40 to $60. So we have to pull back the boot on the model we're working on, it's usually glued into position, so you have to pull back pretty hard, maybe use a paint scraper to break the glue bond and then pull the boot back. And we remove those two screws, we grab the door lock, and then there's three modular wire connectors, one at the top, pull that, that one off, one in the middle, and one at the bottom on the wax motor. So pretty quick and easy to do the door switch. And this is often the door lock. This is often the cause of a machine that won't spin. So we get all those off and then we take our new door lock and we just hook those modular connectors back up. So it could take you literally five minutes and you'll have your new door switch. This doesn't always solve the problem. If it's still not spinning, or agitating, it could be the motor control unit, which we're gonna learn how to replace today, which is also pretty easy to do. You can just do it from the front of the washer. I'm just putting this door lock back in, put those two Phillips head screws back into position, zip them in tight, and then we just put the boot back on. With the Frigidaire model, we just to put the boot back on, we just uh, lift it up back over the ridge and we use a little contact cement to hold it into position. Most units, most models, you have a, a sp spring ring that you take off, but on, on this one, it's actually a little bit of glue holds it on. So we get that back on and that may solve the problem. So you can see if it agitates, if not, it's the motor control unit. What we do is we have it right now set for spin and <clears throat> we're just not getting any result. So we know it's probably the motor control unit. We're gonna take off these two quarter inch screws here on the bottom panel. Sometimes these are oxidized, they're kind of rusted. So take your time, you'll, you'll be able to get them off. Once we spin them off, we remove the lower panel and this is actually how we get to the motor control unit. We want to make sure it's unplugged and we have the breaker turned off. You're going to reach back and you're going to remove just two Phillips head screws that hold the motor control unit in position. It's located in the lower right hand side near the back. And usually I just use a small ratchet with the Phillips head driver to loosen up those two screws and then I use usually just my fingers to spin them off. So I'm just doing the Phillips head screw here closest to me in the front, this one. And then we'll get the one in the back. Also we're going to use some diagonal pliers to cut the zip tie. There's two zip ties you want to cut. One there that holds the wire bundle. <clears throat> and then there's one in the very back that we want to clip. That one right there. And now the wires are freed up and that allows us to easily take the motor control unit and pull it out toward the front. So I've removed the two Phillips head screws. I pull it out, kind of twist it so I can get it underneath the tub twist it to your left counterclockwise and you're going to bring it out to the front and there's just two modular connectors holding it in position so you can pull off that one and then use these two clips to pull off that one and then I'm using a standard head screwdriver to gently pry out the old motor control unit circuit board out of the plastic case Usually when you get these, it's just the circuit board, so you have to reapply it into the plastic case, pushing down so it clicks in. 
And then I'll just put the two modular connectors back on and you know, test it. Because it's been, it's doing great. It's back to normal. Probably what happens is people uh, wash things that are too heavy and the motor control unit is overloaded and it burns it out. So heavy things would be like bathroom mats and blankets. So now I'm doing the fill phase and then the agitation. So it's doing that great too. The motor control unit takes the AC voltage and converts it to DC and also um, spins it at different speeds slow, medium, and then fast. So this is the drain phase. I have it set for spin. And then it's back to gradually picking up speed on spin, and then eventually pick, picks up a lot of speed. Moto control units are pretty expensive. So usually I'll try the door switch first, because that's often the culprit. But in this case, it was a motor control unit, and now it's back to agitating and spinning the really good. I'm just doing the spin cycle. Now I just want to put that back in. <clears throat> so I'll turn the power back off. I'm going to slide it in with the circuit board facing up and then I'll put it in its vertical position in the back and then I'll put those two Phillips head screws back in to hold it in position and I'll put on that front plate bottom panel I'll just put those two screws back in tighten it up <clears throat> And it's back to spinning really good again. So thanks so much for watching. Good luck to you. And please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance.